All right, so today I want to show you how to build the Logitech G29 or 27, 25, any of those models, a brake mod that'll, basically it's the same as the true brake made by AXC. Uh, it's more of a way to simulate load pressure rather than distance, still with a potentiometer. So you'll need the printed parts, which are on Prusa printers, and then three springs from a Prusa Mark III. They're the idler spring. <laughs> As with many who have a Prusa, I end up building a lot of things from the spare parts. So there's three of those springs. This is one spring from AutoZone or Kragen. It's just an exhaust clamp spring. The link will be in the description. One LMU8 linear bearing. One piece of eight millimeter linear rod. And this is, it needs to be cut at 84 millimeters in length. One of those, one M3 by 10 nut along, bolt along with a nut. And this is a Borns potentiometer. It's actually the same model that's used in the true brake. It's 3046L-2-103. And it has six millimeters of measurable range. It will work in place directly of the stock potentiometer in the Logitech G25, 27, any of those models. So it'll be able to wire up. It'll still work on a PlayStation, Xbox, as long as it's wired up the same way, or a PC. So let's see, how do we assemble it? After you get your parts off the print bed, they'll print without any supports. Uh, if you grab this little guy here, we're just gonna thread it in. Okay, so we'll thread that in to the printed part. Now, if it's a little loose, depending on the tolerance of your printers, you can put a tiny screw in here. I made it so that it can clamp to provide tension. It's really not gonna be under a whole lot of load. It just needs to be able to hold it so that this can move back and forth. Okay, so we can set that aside for now. Next step is we're gonna take our top cap and the linear bearing. We're just gonna press it in there. So when it bottoms out, it should have a distance of about 60 millimeters extrude sticking out. This is gonna make it so that when we reach the end, it'll actually bottom out so you won't be pushing past where your potentiometer is no longer reading. So you can set that aside, and now with the bottom part, we're gonna insert our linear bearing stop. That's just gonna go all the way in there. You'll take your linear bearing, also press that in there. Once that bottoms out in there, you can now load your three preload springs. Right in there. And then because it's three, it'll line up. This is what's gonna prevent the twisting motion. Now as we insert it in there, we're actually gonna want the wires towards the top. Keep that in the shot there. Okay, you can now slip your wires down through. Probably want a spring in there. Go ahead and throw that in there. As you line up your linear bearing, that should gently go in there. This slides together. Now we can see we've got a little bit of preload before. This is gonna give you that little bit of pedal feel before and then you'll start actuating the potentiometer. So when you set this, it's not under any load right now, but this main spring is fully extended. You're gonna slide your potentiometer into the block until it bottoms out at full extension. And you can see it in there. It actually has a pin to keep it from going out any further. So that's where you're gonna to want to lock it in place. with your square nut and M3 bolt. Just like that. So now when you compress it, we can see 
the potentiometer is going to stay stationary and we're going to be measuring our motion. All right, now let's move it into mounting into the pedal. Grab your pedal. I have this one already moved from it. The top part gets a little brass insert. It just slides in flush. So that will mount in, depending on if you're going to mount this in a stand or in the pedal, you may want to mount the potentiometer on the inside, like this. So once you get that in there, you can then slide in your bottom pin, put your two bolts in there. Next we'll show how it is mounted inside the pedal box that it comes stock with. So here we have the stock box that the pedal comes in. Now, I'm not actually running it in here, but just so we can make sure that it fits, we won't have any issues for anyone. You'll install it just like you would normally, put your screws in, and you see that we still have plenty of clearance for it, just like you would with your stock one. So next onto the wiring, it's so now onto the wiring. Uh, it doesn't come with plugs on the end of the potentiometer when you order it, but we could just solder it directly or you could do a crimp on connector whatever you prefer. I'm going to end up soldering it on mine. But we have the red wire is actually our signal wire. So on the Logitech G27 that I took it from, my wires were black, white, and red. So you want to wire up your black wire to the yellow wire. From the G27 will be black to the yellow on here. Then white will connect to the red. And then red will connect to green. And that's going to make it work in the same orientation that the G27 does normally. If it ends up being reversed, you can just swap the red, or sorry, the green and the yellow wires with the black and red, and that should reverse the motion in the sim or the game you're playing. I think that covers all the details. Uh, hopefully you have fun printing with it and even more fun racing with it. I really like the feel of it. At first, it didn't uh, feel quite right. It felt way too stiff, but I was used to the stock G27 pedal, which would go right to the floor when you press on it. With this, once I mounted my pedals more sturdy and mounted the seat that kept rolling away, that really helped. Uh, then I could get used to the feel of it. And you're able to modulate the brake pressure really nicely. And uh, I hope it's somewhere similar to the uh, true brake that AXC makes. Uh, Hopefully it's something, a feel like that. I don't know because I don't have one, but I've been enjoying it and hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching.